At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. My younger sister had a notorious knack for getting my mom to read her an endless number of bedtime stories. Every night, they'd start out with a plan to read just one or two books, but you know how those plans tend to go when they concern bedtime. And so, after every story, it was always the same. My sister would always say, Can we read just one more? One more. It was always one more. Never five more, even if that's what it was going to turn out to be in the end. One more. And my mom pushover, I mean loving parent that she was, would read one more. One more. It can be this wonderful little phrase that's a sign of graciousness among children especially who are often asking for one more. One more story. One more game. One more cookie. One more kiss goodnight. And parents, pushovers, or loving parents that we are, find it hard to resist. This gospel reading for today from Luke chapter 13, it's a tough one. It deals with some heavy topics, tragedy, repentance, fruitless lives. Jesus has serious words to say about the consequences of sin. But there in the middle of all this tough stuff, there is a little bit of graciousness. And it's these words. One more. One more. One more year. That's what the gardener asks the fig tree owner for. One more year. One more year to get a tree that isn't producing any fruit, to be vibrant again. Jesus is telling a parable, a story that proves a point he's teaching about. And the point he is teaching about is repentance. Repentance. The whole teaching moment starts in kind of a strange way. Some people come to Jesus and tell him about a group that Pilate, that was the governor of the area, Pilate had put to death, apparently in some gruesome way. But Jesus uses this strange moment to point out the need for repentance. Here's what he says. Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, that they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Did these people die this gruesome death because they were sinners, because they deserved it more, because they were just getting theirs? No, Jesus says. But then he turns the topic, you see, to those who are hearing him speak, even 
toward us. What about you, he seems to say? What about your need to repent? It's a harsh change of topics. A sudden pointing of the finger by Jesus. But this just shows how serious Jesus is about repentance and how urgently he wants us to consider our own need to repent. And so this word of admonishment comes to us today as harshly and as suddenly as it must have felt to those who first heard it. Unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Repent or perish may not seem like a very happy message, but it's a very Lenten message, isn't it? The season of Lent that we are in the middle of, after all, is a season that invites us, encourages us, admonishes us to work at repentance. The scripture readings we hear in Lent, like this one today, are set before us so we can't get away from the hard work of repenting. Time and time again, the voice of the Lord in the scriptures is speaking to us, saying, turn, turn around, turn toward me. And so today we let this word of the Lord speak to us and call to to us this work again. Repentance, after all, isn't something we do once and then we're done. We can't say, well, I repented and pledged to live for the Lord once already. Repentance is something we do over and over again. As Martin Luther said, when our Lord Jesus says repent, he desires our whole life to be one of repentance. Our whole life. What can it mean for you to make your whole life one of repentance? A pastor friend of mine shared a story with me recently about an older member of his church named Cecil, whose health is beginning to decline. Cecil is 85 years old, he has prostate cancer and his wife has dementia. Up until recently, Cecil volunteered every week at the church food pantry. Every night before this wonderful saint of God goes to bed, he spends some time cleaning off his desk at home and then he leaves one slip of paper there on top of the desk. It's this little scrap of bulletin that he tore out years ago when there was a baptism. It's that part of the baptism service where the pastor asks, Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Cecil says he's always been intrigued by the directness of those questions. And so he decided he would put them there on his desk so that he could begin every day thinking about those questions and renouncing and repenting with his whole life. God's mercies are new every morning, the scriptures say. Because of God's grace, we are not defined by what we did yesterday, not defined by our past failures, but by the new possibilities God has for us. God calls us to repent and live into the new forgiven future God gives us each day. One more day, one more year. One more year is what the gardener in the parable Jesus tells asks for. One more chance to get this tree moving in the right direction. One more chance, that's what we ask from God. One more bit of mercy and grace to help us 
move in the right direction. We don't take this mercy and grace of God for granted. We don't ask for this gift because we believe God is a pushover. We ask this because we know and we believe God is a loving Lord who wants us to be forgiven, fruitful, faithful. Amen.